This week, Tucker Carlson, during his Heritage Foundation speech, said... That it, it reminded me that I don't pray enough for the country, and I should. And I'm, I'm upset. Uh, but the answer is, is to include the country in your prayers. Maybe we should all take just like 10 minutes a day to say a prayer about it. I'm coming to you from the most humble and lowly theological position you can. I'm literally an Episcopalian, okay? And even I have concluded it might be worth taking just 10 minutes out of your busy schedule to say a prayer for the future, and I hope you will. Amen, Tucker. Pray for our country. Pray for those in power leading us. Pray while we are blessed enough to have a country to pray for. Welcome to Morning Tea. Hello, I'm Joanne Jolie. It may be really hard for some to choke down the idea of praying for our leaders, those who have the power over us and make decisions on our behalf. It may be a bit like the old suck the lemon challenge, awfully hard if you're feeling bitter about politics. I propose a pray for our leaders challenge. So stay to the end for some incredible inspiration that's going to get you going and praying more effective prayers. First start by praying big. Now this could sound impossible, something like, Dear God, I ask that our leaders in government will lead us with your wisdom and in your truth, and that they will repent and that their hearts will turn back to you. That may feel like a tall order, but I will remind you of Nineveh and Jonah who ran away from God's command to go to the people with the message that they were down to their last 40 days. These people didn't know their left hand from their right. Does that story have a familiar ring to it? I mean, our culture is confused about a fundamental left-right truth, such as what is a man and what is a woman and a great many other things along those lines. And what did those lost Ninevites do when they heard Jonah's message? They were ready for it. They believed. They repented from the king on down. And that generation was spared destruction. It happened in a confused culture. It can happen again. So pray big, pray for the impossible to happen. We pray in obedience. We're told in scripture to pray for those who are leading us. Rulers are established to serve the governed and to maintain order in the culture. And that's because God wants us to live in peace. We want to live in peace in our homes, in our communities, and in our country. And he has a long history of acting on prayers. It's pretty awesome to think about Daniel after having a revelation. He embarked on a three-week semi-fast in prayer, not knowing that because of his prayers, there was a fight taking place in the heavens. The heavenly person arrived at the end of the three weeks and he said, Daniel, highly valued man, Carefully consider the words I'm speaking to you. Stand up, for now I have been sent to you. For from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. I came because of your words. Well, that's extraordinary. It's pretty exciting what can happen if we set our hearts to understand and to humble ourselves before our God. We should pray with compassion. Our leaders need our prayers and compassion because they are going to be held to account for what they've done with the power, like it or not, that comes directly from God to them. For there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Most people enter into public service and they really do have a deep conviction and a desire to improve their communities and our world. They want to make a difference. They have to wrestle with difficult issues. They, they really have a tough job. When we pray for authorities, it really helps us to be able to see them as human beings, just like us. My husband worked in local government for some years and he experienced the exhausting demands of public service, calls all day long, endless complaints and problems to resolve. Today, politicians really are risking life and livelihood to go into government service and many capable people won't even take the risk anymore. Why don't you consider a new approach when discussing politics? Next time there's an uproar in the family or in your circle of friends, you really could blow everyone away with a standout response, something like, yeah, I see your point, I really do. But I want you to know I respect the hard work our leaders do. They show up every day. They face the big challenges. And I'm praying that they're going to do the right thing. I'm asking God to change their minds. They might find your response rather bewildering. But seriously, we should remind them that although we have our valid concerns, we're not to be disrespectful or entertain mockery and hateful comments against authorities that God has established. So for more thoughts on politics and believers, watch this or find the link below. In the now I want to offer you that inspiration for prayer uh, through some of the most famous quotes by the great preacher Charles Spurgeon. Pray until you can pray. Pray to be helped to pray and do not give up praying because you can't pray. For it is when you think you cannot pray, that is when you are praying. To pray is to enter the treasure house of God and to gather riches out of an inexhaustible storehouse. You are before the Lord. Let your words be few, but let your heart be fervent. Prayer is the best response to hatred. He who knows how to overcome with God in prayer has heaven and earth at his disposal. Cold prayers ask for a denial. 
prayer is Doubt's Destroyer, Ruin's Remedy, the antidote to all anxieties. Whether we like it or not, asking is the rule of the kingdom. Prayer is the slender nerve that moveth the muscle of omnipotence. I'm so glad you're here. Do you have any thoughts on praying for our leaders in our country? I want to hear from you. Please leave your comments below. I'm here every week, so don't go without subscribing because we all need inspiration and motivation to keep going in this race. So have a great week, and remember to look for the blessings. They're all around you. Bye. -bye.